Okay, that's not. That's not. That's not. It's working. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. New cars are dumb. Old cars are smart. That's why today I'm going to add some new features to my old car. Proximity unlock is just when you walk up to your car and it automatically opens like magic. A lot of the new cars have this, but not cars from 2004. In this video, I create two Arduinos. The first Arduino is installed in the electronics in my car door. The second Arduino will be carried by me. When they are close enough, they will connect and unlock my car. As an added bonus, I can also unlock my car using an app on my iPhone. This will work similarly. When a connection is created, the car will unlock. You might be saying, isn't there a technology called a easy go to by CompuStar that already does this for you? No, but seriously, that does exist. So don't, don't do this. Thirty-three BLE, and I believe I just have to snap these apart. This is the weirdest thing I've ever done with electronics. Like, make this terrible crunching sound. These came with these, which plugs into this. It's really hard to shove this into one of these jumper wires. Apparently, you're supposed to just put them into here. All this is connected. The yellow, all the green. So I think I need to run my resistor here. Oh, it's not going. Okay. Uh, let's back up for a sec. Oh, a little bit more aggressive about it now. Oh! Okay, adding code is pretty easy. You just plug this in. Uh, we have our sketch. Verify. Oh, and it's bad. Top secret. I want to miss the magical moment. Oh! Okay, so it's super intermittent. Let's try to make that not shitty. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm going to press this. And then this is going to stay unlocked for five seconds. At this point in the project, I was feeling a little concerned about using RF over BLE. I was concerned about power requirements. In retrospect, I'm really not sure how much this matters. This one should now be using BLE. Turn it on. Right, look, it's, uh... it's working. The receiver is seeing uh, things. And this RSSI value is distance. Well, that's what we're going to use to figure out how close I am to the vehicle. But it seems like the power is kind of inconsistent. But this is currently set to 3.3, and I should be setting it to 5. Now everything works. Well, that's still happening, I guess. I updated that, so when I turn it on and turn this on, it unlocks. Here she is. Oh, God, bunny. Run. She's a little dirty. To the left of the steering column. Is it underneath this panel? Let's find out. It's the gray and the blue plugs are actually what I'm looking for. And they're plugged in. I can do this. There's one on the back. It's not too hard to press. Now, oh, these have a lot of different wiring going on them. Hmm. It might be better to actually wire this into this. And this bug just landed on me, so I freaked out. <laughs> but it's just a not ladybug it's whatever that invasion species is i still need one of these uh but they're only five bucks and i can get it delivered today so we're gonna do that this is a 12 volt trigger relay so this will wire into the power of my car unlock and lock my car using hopefully the signal from one of these i also ordered a new door panel for my car oh i actually bought one more thing too this Ooh, what's that Oh, a $9 soldering iron. This won't be janky at all. Time to learn how to solder. is called liquid tape just glob this on there so hot here and we do this just a quick tap unlock lock you can see it's janky i'm not hearing the relays fire 12 volts but if i go the other way this is nothing that place where i've got yellow wired into is actually power 
Just showing my inexperience, I'm literally just winging it. It's gonna take a little more work because I need to send power to these differently now. Liquid taped up, looks a little cleaner. Let's plug this into power and I'm actually getting a light finally. Let's go ahead and turn on the car. Plug this in. It's working. We're gonna unplug this. Let's plug it back in. This is pretty hard to do with one hand. It's gym time, so you just gotta carry around all this wiring until you're ready to actually do everything. <laughs> I was looking more closely at this board. So I might be able to just wire into these two right here. That way I wouldn't have to splice my wiring harness and I might be able to sneak it out through the side. Well, if I line up these tabs, so there is a little gap to wire through here out of this and then maybe run this down somewhere. So this is the inside of the door and it's gonna feed up in there just like this. I'm definitely gonna run it out here. But there's a seam right there that I think corresponds to this seam. some of these. We still need to draw one more wire through here for the ground. Right here I'm just testing to see where that ground is on the board so that I don't solder to the wrong spot. This one right here. Make sure it clicks. It's not perfect but look you can carry it in one hand. Always playing with this. I was bending these a lot, kind of testing, and this broke loose. Turn this on. And then I'm gonna turn it off after five seconds. This Arduino, when I turn it on now, is showing a red light. So I'm gonna go check it, but I think it just died. Yeah, while I'm waiting for that, I'm just gonna design a little box to put this in. All set up, ready to go. <laughs> and this disaster, which will be very clean soon. Let's do one of these. Hey, much cleaner. Okay, so I didn't show it, but I actually took these cleaned up versions and just installed everything in the door. One more final thing to note is that I actually used a 12 volt to five volt buck converter. The nine volt would only power this for about a hundred hours. It's better to run it off the car battery. So having that step down to be able to have the Arduino run all the time is great. Right here I've got it turned on with the green light and I'm just going to walk away. Perfect. That works great. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sick. Go inside it's freaking hot i actually ended up reprogramming the arduinos so now i'm able to actually connect to the receiver from my phone now i've got both recordings going so i got the recording on my phone and it'll be at the same time as i have this going so i'm going to connect and disconnect the wrong one there we go